welcome to Blueprint OT. In this video, we will talk about relays. A relay is basically an electrical switch utilizing a coil to open or close a circuit. So what you can see here is the circuit diagram of a relay, basically only a part of the relay, because what you can see here is representing the coil. So that's the main component of every relay. In addition, you would have something like this. That's basically the load circuit. So this specific type of relay we can see here is closed by default and would be open the circuit when engaged. And that's exactly the reason why you call this type of relay a opener or a breaker. And obviously when there is an opener or a breaker, there's also a closer or maker. So again, you have a coil as the base element and then you have the circuit of the load, which is in our case opened by default and if activated it will close the circuit. So this type is again called the closer or maker. I will stick to the terminology opener and closer because I think it's a bit more comprehensive. But wait, there is another a little bit special type. Again we have a coil as the base element but then we have two circuits, basically two circuits for two different loads. So this one can switch between the two circuits. So this type you would call a switcher or a changeover. Going back to the first type, let's quickly visualize what's happening. By default, the circuit is closed and your light bulb will be on. If you activate, if you engage the relay, it will open the circuit and break the circuit and obviously the light bulb will turn off. For the closer or maker, you again have the light bulb which is deactivated by default and if you engage the relay, it will close the circuit and activate your load. For the changeover, it's a bit different. By default, the left-hand side circuit is engaged and your light bulb on the left-hand side is on. If you engage the relay, it will turn off the first one and turn on the second one. So that's basically all about what a relay is doing and what our different circuit diagrams look like. But let's dive right into how the relay actually works on the inside. Of course, there are different types of manufacturers, but this is just a general representation of what's happening inside a relay. As you can see here, we have the coil on the left hand side and we have the so-called pallet in the middle, which is basically the actual switch. And on the right hand side, we have the circuit that's to be closed. So when wiring up all of this, you would have the load circuit on the right hand side, in our case again, a light bulb as the load. And on the left hand side, you would have the engagement circuit or let's say the activation circuit. So what you would do is you apply a voltage in the activation circuit to run electrons through the coil and you see there's a core inside the coil. This will create a magnetic field, move the pallet down and actually close the circuit on the load side. So let's engage the activation circuit and watch the electrons flow through the coil. The magnetic field gets built and the circuit for the load is closed and obviously the light bulb will light up. So that's how a relay works in the inside and how it's supposed to work. To enable the relay to perform its task, you need to apply this activation or engagement voltage on the left hand side. This voltage has obviously a certain threshold. In case you're not reaching the voltage required to switch or you're slightly below on your supply voltage here on the left hand side, what will happen is that the magnetic field won't be strong enough and the force needed to pull down the pallet won't be strong enough. So what will happen It's either doing nothing or what's even worse, you have a voltage that's like in between, like not strong enough to properly close, but strong enough to pull a little and you will have this little jiggling of your relay. So it will close open, close open, close open in a very high frequency. So what you can't do is use a relay like a transistor to open or close something slightly. It will be either open or close, or it will toggle between rapidly. To understand why this toggling or jiggling is obviously not good and also why the lifetime of a relay is actually limited, we need to take a closer look on what's actually happening on the load circuit. So let's take a closer look on those two contacts here on the right hand side. As soon as we engage the relay, the pellet here in the middle will start to move and the contacts will move together and a little spark will be created, a little lightning will appear between the two contacts. This is totally fine, that's normal behavior, but because of this, the spark itself 
will eat up our contacts. So every time we have a spark, a little portion of the contact is destroyed, is burned. So every engagement, every spark will eat up our contacts bit by bit. But no need to worry. If you use your relay properly, you have thousands of engagement until end of lifetime. Before we sum up this video, let's take a quick look on what the relay is actually used for normally. Obviously, there's the functionality to close circuits, open them, or use it as a changeover. But another use case for the relay could be gaining galvanic isolation or electrical isolation. So if you think about the load circuit here on the right hand side and the supply circuit on the left hand side is basically not connected directly. So this little pellet there in the middle is obviously non-metal or non-conductive material. So there is no electrical connection between the supply circuit and the load circuit, which is basically the definition of galvanic isolation. Obviously you want to do this if your load circuit is a big load, a heavy load that you cannot engage directly with your supply voltage or maybe you have coils like motors or stuff like this in your load circuit which could create a kickback voltage into your supply voltage which may destroy your supply voltage or your supply actually which could be a microcontroller or a pin of an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi or whatsoever. If you would like to learn more about the use cases of relays and why you do it and what's actually the benefit compared to transistors and so on, drop a comment below and let us know. So thanks for watching until the end and please make sure to give a thumbs up so the video gets recommended to other people like you who want to learn about electrical engineering and electronics or IoT through videos. See you next time.